Alright folks, today we have a bit of a different kind of video than I usually do. We're going to take a look at dubious Chinese Famiclone handhelds. Ooh. Here's what we're looking at. The Game Prince. I got this on eBay for, if I remember, I think I got this around a month ago. I got it for like 20 bucks, something like that. And I thought, hey, it takes AAA batteries. So, you know, no need to worry about really crappy Chinese batteries that give out after a year or whatever. I can just put regular batteries in it. It has games on it I'm interested in. And it actually looks comfortable to hold, and the D-pad doesn't look bad. I saw another uh, something similar to this that did Sega games, but the D-pad looked awful, so I didn't choose that. And it also had a built-in lithium-ion battery. Which I don't tend to like on dubious handhelds like this, so we're going to stick with this one. It is called the Game Prince. I guess they couldn't use Game King because if you've seen any videos by Stuart Ashen, you've noticed that the Game King already exists. So, iPhone PC Android games. Well, that's slightly true to a certain extent, but it's mostly just Nintendo games, actually. Built-in classic games. And there's like a bunch of colors and stuff here. I guess these are the colors you can get the handheld in. I got green. It has a 2.5 inch TFT display. New classic 12-bit game. 12-bit game? What? <laughs> All right. Built-in classic games. The power supply is either three AAA batteries or a lithium-ion battery. Yeah, curiously on the top, uh, you can either use a AAA battery or a battery pack. I like the AAA batteries better because you can replace those uh, a lot more easily. On the back, of course, there's a diagram of the handheld itself. Power switch up there, reset here, D-pad there, although it's not really a D-pad, it's just four separate buttons. An audio speaker, as opposed to what, a video speaker? Uh, start pause button. A turbo key. Yay, turbo buttons. And then the A and B button. And a volume control. That's quite important because this thing gets very loud at high volumes. So, oh, yes, there's the bottom here. Come on, focus. Here's the bottom. Of course, you have the not to three sad onion. Um, Waste electrical products should not be disposed of with household waste. Please recycle where facilities space exist. Check with your local authority for recycling advice. Yeah, in the United States, you just, when you recycle stuff, you just kind of send it off somewhere in the mail, or you just give it to your uh, recycling company that takes your bins, you know, every week. So let's take a look at this. Now, the funny thing is, before I even open it, hilarity ensues. This product is with patent. <laughs> uh huh. Sure. <laughs> you just can't make this stuff up. The joke writes itself. Oh boy. But anyway, let's take a look at the device itself. It comes in your typical sort of plasticky shell thing. Here's the handheld itself. It's actually pretty well built. I mean, it, it feels cheap, but it doesn't feel like really, really nasty cheap. It just feels, it just, it feels like toys did in the 90s, basically. It comes with a video cable because, believe it or not, on the device itself, there is a little jack here that lets you plug it into a TV, and we're going to try that as well. The cable looks very cheap. It just looks like it's your standard uh, 2.5 millimeter jack. So, nothing proprietary or anything. We like that. Now, here's the manual. I cannot read that, because... Words. Here's a black and white picture of it with Super Mario Brothers, except the picture on it is not Super Mario Brothers. It looks like a DS version of, like, Super Mario Brothers or something. Actually, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The picture on here is new Super Mario Brothers for, I, I think, the DS or the 3DS. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, making things look better than they are. Nice. So, of course, you have your, uh, your functions diagram in two languages here. 
Now, there is some gold in here. There is one thing in particular that I have to point out. <laughs> you have, of course, all the steps. One of the steps is not and. <laughs> not and. All right. <laughs> not and. Now, under the not and thing, there is one in, there is one sentence in particular that is absolute gold. Number four. Do not dispose batteries at will. Protest the environment. <laughs> Protest the environment. Well, I better, I guess I better listen to the manual. Protest the environment, huh? Yeah, damn it, Bush. I mean, how long? How long can we stand to have a, another Bush? Ah, uh, every once in a while there is absolute gold in these manuals. I have no clue what's on the back of here. Looks like maybe specs, something like that. No idea. But I think it is time for us to take a look at the device itself. So here it is. It's, mo it's the RS-1. No clue who makes this. It doesn't even really say where it's made on it anywhere. But I think we all know where it was made. It takes the three AAA batteries. It did not come with any genuine Panasonic batteries or anything like that. I just used some Duracells that I had. It uses screws to open up, so if you need to replace a screen or something or try to fix it, it should be pretty easy to get into. There is a little thing here for a lanyard, which did not come with it. Which is a shame. I wanted a lanyard that would break in five minutes. Come on, man. And the power switch is up here. There's the AV out jack, which we'll be testing later. There's the volume wheel, which they said would be on the bottom, but it's not. It's on the side here. There's the little speaker, which is actually not too bad. And the TFT LCD screen, which actually is a pretty good screen. Uh, not gonna lie, it actually is pretty good. I've left the screen protector on it, just because. And uh, we're gonna test it. So let's turn the power switch on. As you can hear, it sounds like a Nintendo, because it basically is. It's a fam. It's a Famicom on a chip in a handheld. Yeah, it even has Nintendo games on it. 152 in 1. Contra 1, Super Mario, Ninja Turtles, Chip and Dale, Bloody Fight, Ninja Gaiden 3, Double Dragon, Tetris 2, The Goonies, and one of my favorites, Gradius. So, and as well as Nintendo games, it has uh, some other games that are a bit interesting. It has weird stuff like Mario 8, Mario 7, Disney 6, Chip and Dale 8. They, they look almost like just unusual versions of the game. World 8 1. Like, this version of Mario just starts at World 8 for no reason. So there's just really weird stuff like this on here. Damn it. <laughs> Improving my skill, my excellent skill. Actually, wait a minute. The one thing I like to look at the beginning screen is, look at this, it's like a Mario setting. And look at the top. There's clearly like a weird looking Sonic there. Maybe it's Sonic, I don't know. But it's weird looking. Yeah, there's all these games that are like just unusually organized in there. Hot Blood. I don't know what that is. Turtle Ninja. Plant. Here's here's the iPhone. Here's the iPhone PC Android games part. Here is uh, Plants vs Zombies and Angry Bird Three. <laughs> Turtle Ninja. F one F one Hero. That looks like a pretty good racing game actually. Look, Bomberman. Yeah, I mean, th this is one very unusual ta uh, unusual handheld. has Arkanoid, which I think is pretty cool. Arkanoid's awesome.
Who doesn't love a good game of Arkanoid? I suck at it because it's a small screen. I'm looking at it through the viewfinder, so... Yeah. The only thing is you have to scroll through all this crap just to get to the game you want. Which, to me, is pretty annoying. So... Uh, let's check out... Let's check out Angry Birds. Angry Bird 3. Alright, let's give it a shot. So this is Angry Birds as if it was on an NES, okay? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, that's just amusing. Yeah, you have, like, specific angles. So I'm gonna do, like, that angle. Yeah, that's the most unexciting version of Angry Birds I've ever seen. That is pretty boring. Let's try plants. Let's see plants versus zombies real quick. Is that the same music? Oh, brother. It has, like, a mouse pointer. What the hell? Look at that. It has a mouse pointer. Yeah, this is a very- that- that's horrible. That's- no. That's terrible. So I dropped it, and this happened. Wow. I dropped it, and it completely screwed the thing up. That's hilarious. Now it's fine again. If I drop it, it derps. So I dropped it, and it did this again. Not the most durable handheld in the world. It's crying in agony. That's hilarious. Yeah, this is just... This is kind of a brief look at a Famicom handheld. Uh, it has some great games on it, but the screen is just too small for certain ones. Like, Gradi with Gradius, you really want a bigger screen. And that is exactly why we're going to plug this into the TV and see how it looks on there. Give me a moment. Okay, I have it plugged into the TV. Let me... Just turn the volume up enough so that we can hear it. To like 45, I guess. And theoretically, when I turn this on, the handheld should just act like a controller. Yep. <laughs> Look at that. Just like a real Nintendo. And you can actually see this better, too. A lot of buzzing in the background, as you can hear. So let's try... Let's try Gradius on a big screen instead. That doesn't look too bad, actually. Oh, that's so much better. That looks pretty good. I'm impressed. Not bad at all. The only thing I don't like about this thing so far is the D-pad. The D-pad is not very... The D-pad is all separate buttons, so it feels very weird. I could get used to it, but I don't like it. This game is difficult. So when you reset it, it resets the whole thing, obviously. So let's find another game that's very familiar to people, so to, pro to prove how Nintendo this is, let's do Super Mario Brothers. Oh, you can see it has uh, jail bars for some reason. That's odd. So the jail bars 
I don't know what those prove, but it, I've that's exactly what happens on my top loader uh, NES. So it says to me NES hardware. I don't know what it says to anybody else, but this is a Famicom on a chip, and I think that kind of proves it. <laughs> Yep. Plays just like Super Mario usually does. Yeah, plays completely normally. No big deal. There you go. Ah, ah. The only thing that throws me off, other than dying, is that on the controller, A is down here, B is up here. Why did you reverse the buttons? I mean, they didn't reverse the they didn't reverse the controls in the game. They literally, those buttons are the opposite of what they normally are uh, on a Nintendo controller. That's also another flaw I think is stupid. Again, it's not that bad to get used to, but it's just something that bothers me. Yeah, plug into a TV, this thing is pretty fantastic. Especially for $20. <laughs> it's a fun little toy to play with, I like it. Of course, you don't, you're, you really shouldn't expect a whole lot, but... You know, it's, it, it, it's fun, and I like things that are fun. Like most sane people, I think, would. And it has games like this on it that are just awesome. Nineteen forty two. Yeah, all the games play absolutely perfectly, that's the thing. The games play great. Just like they would on a real Nintendo, because it's using Famicom on a chip hardware, so it's 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 the real thing. It's not emulated. That's the really huge positive about this handheld. Yes. Aww. Yeah, 1942 plays nicely. But yeah, you get the point. <laughs> it's a Nintendo, but it's in a little handheld like this. And that, I think, is really cool. Uh, so, yeah, I just thought I'd make a video about this because little handhelds like this that have uh, old games on them, I just find fascinating. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of uh, me covering this kind of stuff and if you want to see more because I've always thought this kind of stuff was interesting because it's just something that you don't see every day. And, uh, yeah, that is the Game Prince Model RS1. It's basically a Famicom on a chip in a handheld with a little screen. And it takes AAA batteries, so you don't have to worry about really crappy Chinese rechargeable batteries dying and not having really great life like most of them don't. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a nice little handheld. It's neat. It's not ideal, but it's neat. And, I don't know, I have fun with it. I like the turbo button. That's pretty cool. But, yeah, I think stuff like this is really cool. Uh... I'm not going to tell you to rush out and get it, but I think this stuff is cool. And I hope you did too. So, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.